Hello, my name is William Justice. Today we're going to be creating this page flip, page turn transition using DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. A page flip or page turn is a great way to transition between scenes. We've all read books and magazines and flipped pages. I know there's a lot of different ways to set up this transition. I experimented with 3D and quite a few different other ways. I came up with something that I thought was pretty easy. It's real simple. It just uses a few nodes. Um, actually, I'd be curious to see how you would do it, uh, you, how you would set up the transition. Um, let me know in the comments below how you would set this up. Are you interested in learning more about DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, filmmaking? I know I am. That's why I created this channel. Subscribe, follow my progress. So as I learn, I'm going to create new videos and talk about what I learned and what I did. And hopefully, uh, by sharing that, um, you can learn something too. I ended up using a pretty simple setup for the transition. Not a lot of nodes. Let me show you how it works. Okay, let's make some transitions. I have three clips. There's a clip of me talking, a clip of uh, some feet walking there, and then a fountain. So we're gonna just set up a transition between these first two clips. And then once we have that, I'm gonna show you how to reuse that transition for these second two clips over here, between that one and that one. I was originally planning on using, doing one way and I saw something this morning. Um, so I'm gonna try that to do something a little bit different. So the first thing we need to do is overlap the, these two clips here. So we'll put this clip on top and the walking clip is going to be on bottom and we're going to with the walking clip selected we're just going to shift it over about 12 frames because we're going to have our the transition happen in a 12 frame period so to do that we select that clip and then we're going to hit the less than or comma key 12 times to shift it over 12 frames to the left okay so all we have to do is cut these clips so right at the beginning of that one, we select the top clip and hit Control B to cut it. And the same thing on the bottom, we'll select that and hit Control B. Now we just need to get these two clips into Fusion, so we're going to highlight them both, right click, and say New Fusion Clip. And we'll highlight that and click Fusion on the bottom. Okay, now it's time to set up the animation. We have um, the Media In 1 and 2. So Media in 2 is the foreground and media in 1 is the background. The foreground is with the merge nodes is always in green and the background is always in yellow. So I usually like having the foreground on top. It makes a little more sense to me. Um, so you can see that the foreground is here and if we take it and if we take the foreground and shift it, you'll see that we have that other clip below it. So the first way I set up the transition was using a grid warp effect. So we're going to go to the effects library, tools, go down to warp and take grid warp and we're going to drag it right in there in between the media in two and the merge. Um, so what the grid warp does is it, we'll get rid of the effects library right now. So it allows you to move these points around and kind of change up the image. And we're going to use that to do the page turn. Okay, so all we need to do for this, it's pretty simple. Um, we're going to set the X grid size to two and the Y grid size to one. So you can see we have the image split in half right there. And that allows us to take these points and bend them back like that to create the page turn effect. So to animate the points, we want to be on the first frame. And right down here where it says right click for mesh animations, we're going to click on that and select animate. Now we have the frame set up so that they can be keyframed. And it's real simple. We go to the first frame and make sure that that's done. And let's go to frame six. And we'll just take each of these points and pull them back like that and back and up and there we have a simple it's just a real simple page turn now we can do a lot of things with this with some um by adding in some some motion blur and other things to make it look a little bit better but what i'm going to show you i'm going to try a different way um, i was watching a video this morning from jamie finn and he used this uh, transform node called dve and watching him do it, i was like okay that would really do kind of the same thing that i'm doing here so i thought i'd give it a try um so let me delete out the grid warp go to the effects library and we'll go to transform and you'll see this DVE. I'd seen it, in here, seen it in here before but I'd never really tried it. I wasn't really sure what it did so um, I guess I should have played with it to see. So let's drag it in to the same way, same place where the grid warp was and you'll see what this one does is it allows us to do some kind of a 3D transitions or transforms. Um, we can do a spin like this with this is what we're going to use this Y transform on the, the Y rotation to get that flip effect. But you'll notice that it's affecting both sides of the image and we only really want the right hand side of the image to be affected so we're going to use a, some of the masking tools to do that. So with DVE selected we're going to hit the rectangular mask and you'll notice that once that's there 
the Y rotation only is happening inside of that area. So we just need to move that to the left hand side of the screen. Excuse me, the right hand side of the screen. So we'll select the rectangle and the we want the width to be 0.5, which is half the screen, and we want the height to be 1, which is going to be full screen. And we're going to shift it over and we'll set the center X to 0.75. So it's going to exactly cover that side. So now you notice when we do our rotation here, it's only affecting that side. So we just need to keyframe it. So we'll be on the first frame there. We'll keyframe the Y position, go to the sixth frame, and we'll pull this all the way back and we'll set it to minus 90. And we have the first half of the animation. Now we're going to work on the bottom half, which is going to be the footsteps clip. So we'll hit that and hit F2. So for this one, we want the left hand side to be to start out rotated and then rotate down at the end of the animation. Um, so we're going to add a little junction thing here by clicking holding Alt and clicking, and then we get this little box. And this is going to allow us to, um, we're going to use this as an input for um, when we set up a macro in just a little bit. It's uh, it's really simple. You don't, don't It's not, not very complicated. Um, so we just need to take this, and we're going to use another DVE node to operate on the media in one, which is footsteps. So we'll take DVE and drag that down. We'll take that in, and we'll click on that. We'll take a look at it. And there, so we have this guy rotating. So this is kind of the exact opposite. We only want the effect happening on the left-hand side of the screen. So we're going to do a rectangular mask, set the height to 1, and we're going to set the center X to 0.25, and that's going to move over to the left side. And once that's there, you'll see that we only have the left side going. So we just need to animate it. We're going to start at frame 6. And we're going to set this one to start at 90. So that's going to it's going to start all the way up with the keyframe and go to the very the very last frame, and we'll put that at zero. And that's going to have it folding back down. See it right there, folding back down. So now we just need to put these two together, and we're going to do that by taking the output of the DVE and bring it into the merge there. So it's going to be on top. So that's going to put so that's going to put the um, talking clip on top of the walking clip. Let's get the output. Okay, so we're almost there. You, know, you notice that it kind of does this, but this part is, the walking part is always here. So we just need to kind of mask that out from this one. We need to only show, we're only using the left-hand side, so we really don't want that right-hand side to show it all. And we're going to get rid of that in the merge. So with the merge selected, with the rectangular mask tool right there. And we're gonna put this all the way on the left because we only want the left-hand side. So we're gonna set the height to one and the center X is gonna be 0.25 and the Y is 0.5 right there. So now when we look at this guy, you'll see that it, it's masking out that thing and we get both sides of the animation. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. Now the next thing we can do is put a little motion blur on it. So we're going to select the DVE and go to go to the settings, click motion blur, and we'll just set it to like 80. And then we're going to do that on the, the second DVE settings, we'll check motion blur, and we'll set it to 80. And this is what we got. So you can do some other things with it. Um, if you play around with the, the, the spline editor, you can kind of um, clean it up, make it a little bit smoother. Um, so now the question is, we want, to, we want to reuse this thing. We've set up this great animation. We, want to be, we don't want to have to do this every time. So there's two, there's two ways that we can save this off. The first way, hi highlight all the middle nodes. So we don't need the inputs, because those are going to be changing, and we don't need the output. We're going to right click on it. And where it says settings, we're going to click save as. And you want to make sure that you're in your DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, temp templates, Fusion, transition. And I created a transitions folder. And I'm going to call this one page flip 12 because it's a 12 frame uh, page flip. And we're going to save that off. Okay, so 
if if something bad happens and so I'm going to delete all that and oh you know everything messed up we all you got to do to get it back or use it in another place is go into the effects library and scroll down to where it says templates and then transitions and I had created this folder and we see page flip 12 so we're just going to take that and drag it in and that gets us everything all the node structures already set up and we're going to take the media in two and go into the first DVE and the median one and go into that little junction point. And that's what we set up there. So you only have to connect up to one thing and we have our animation. And actually we got to connect the media out as well. And we're right back where we started. So the other thing we can do, it's, it's even a little simpler is to turn this into a macro and um, don't get too intimidated by the macro. It'll th with this kind of a setup, it'll really do everything for you if you don't want to do any customized settings. So. We're going to highlight the nodes in the middle. We're going to right click on it. And we're going to go to macro and click create macro. And we're just going to give it a name. We'll call it um, macro page flip 12. Um, now what this, this is going to have a bunch of settings in here. I'm not going to go into it because there's a, a lot of people that are probably going to do some uh, really deep dives on this to show you what's going on. But any, any of the ones in red are the ones that have something that's an input or an output that's going to be pre-checked. So you'll see that there's this input here and this was the pipe router. So we're going to call this, um, we can give it a name. We're going to call it um, background. And the merge two has the output right there. That's the, that's the output from this merge two going that way. And the first DVE has another input and it's checked because you're get to that. That's going to be an option for you to use in the macro. And we're going to call this foreground. And you hit, this is a little odd, you hit close, and then you say yes, save, and we're going to call it macro page, page flip 12. I already had it there, I'm just going to save over what I did. Okay, so if, if you want to use that macro the next time, that's what I was going to do um, right here. So let's go ahead and use that macro on the animation, on the transition between the feet walking and that clip right there. So we want the feet walking on top, so we're going to put that on top. We're going to shift the uh, the water water fountain thing over 12 frames by hitting the less than comma and comma key 12 times, and we just need to cut these up. So we're going to select the first clip, put it right put the right there, hit Control B to cut it, and then Control B. So we have these two cut out. I'm going to highlight them, right click, and say New Fusion Clip. Now when we get into Fusion, it's going to look like it did before. So all we need to do is use our macro. So we can, or you guys, we can click anywhere, hit Control Spacebar, and type in um, page. So page flip. So we can see our page flip macro. And we're going to add that in there. So you notice we have these two inputs, and this is the, um, these are the ones that we name. This is foreground, and that's background. So the foreground, the clip we're starting from, is going to be the walking clip. So that's going to be media in two. So we're going to put that into the foreground. And media in one is the fountain, so we're going to put that into the background and take that into the output. And let's see what it looks like. We'll go with a media media one selected, and we got our we got our transition right there. Real quick, we just added that in, connected up the inputs, and we're ready to go. And that's what all there is. Like I, like I said, there's probably a lot of different ways to set this up. So I kind of like, like the challenge of trying something new this morning, um, that new note. I liked it. I'll probably use that again quite a bit. Um, I kind of wish I knew I wish I wish knew it was there a while ago. Anyway, um, hope you enjoyed this and hope you're able to use something similar. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. That's the uh, sim super simple page flip transition. Um, again, let me know how you would do it. I'd really be curious to see how anybody else would set this up. I'm sure there's a lot of different ways. Um, if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe to my channels, comment, feedback, let me know how I'm doing.